Okay, I'm going to be talking about fishing this morning a little while. And I've entitled our message, Jesus, the Master Fisherman, who taught his disciples that they should be fishermen. As far as a hobby goes, I don't have a thing that I enjoy anymore than fishing when I get to go. I haven't got to go in a little while, but I've always enjoyed sitting on a boat or sitting on the bank wherever I'm at fishing. Uh, I didn't think life was complete unless you were fishing. <laughs> Okay, in Matthew chapter 4, let's read, the, and also Matthew 13, let's read what it says. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the same message that John the Baptist preached, wasn't it? Repent. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers or fishermen. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets, and they followed him. Going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father, and they followed him, making the first four church members that ever existed on the earth. The word church means a called out group of people. They were called out by the Lord himself, and they made up the first church. And the church, of course, added to itself. But the first church members, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, were fishermen. All right, let's go read to Matthew 13 about fishing. Verse 47, in the middle of your page. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and they gathered the good into vessels, but they cast the bad away. Shall it, shall it be at the end of the world? The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Okay, the first church members were not scientists they were not great scholars. As a matter of fact, the scripture says about them that when the people saw them, they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned men. Not too savvy as far as education goes. But they were down by the Sea of Galilee where they had uh, made it their profession to make their living by fishing. They were fishing for fish when our Lord came along. They became greater fishermen, for they became fishers of men. In verse 19, we read again for emphasis sake, Jesus said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. What are our soul winners doing? They're trying to catch fish or make them the children of God. These fellows were not born fishers of men, as man is not born a great fisherman. Uh, we could take these little, little ones, but then Ricky out here, take them out to the lake and say, go, go, go fishing. They wouldn't know what to do. They've got to learn, had not they? Same thing with soul winners. You have to learn. 
These fellows, though, uh, learn from the master fisherman, Christ. He taught them how. They became fishers of men instead of fishermen. And the question is, <clears throat> which is the most important? I have a friend I've known for years, haven't seen him in a long time now. Uh, I helped lead to the Lord and he got into the ministry. And one Sunday morning he got up instead of going to, to the pulpit, he went fishing. Never went back to church. I ran into his son by chance recently. I didn't know it was his son until I, he, uh, I mentioned to him. He said, oh, my dad's out my house. Go see him. He'd like to see you. But all these years, he quit. And he was pastoring a church. He was the pastor of a church in East Texas. But he chose to be a fisher of fish, didn't he? Rather than a fisher. But folk, I got to tell you, the Lord appointed us here on this earth. All of us have but a short season at the most. He put us here to be fishers of men. Not of fish. As much as I love to fish. But the Lord likened the winning souls to that of casting a net of the gospel of our Lord into the sea and bring it forth. Now, if you will, look at your next scripture down, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. Thy art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that dealt treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he, and makest men as the fishes of the sea, as a creeping thing that have no ruler over them. They take up all them with the angle, they catch them in their net, and they gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. So the church, not just the preachers, but the whole church, is to take up the net and cast it into the world. And folk, it takes all of us. But then uh, uh, verse 47 says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. There's nothing wrong with a net. It's a good net. But when it's cast forth, it brings forth every kind. At the first time that it was cast, when the Lord was gathering his disciples to build his church on, it caught a man by the name of Judas. And again, there's nothing wrong with the net. Judas, somehow or another, became intrigued with what our Lord was doing. He thought Jesus was going to set his kingdom up at that time while he was on earth. And when Jesus, or Judas, saw that the multitude was against our Lord and they were going to crucify him, he led them to our Lord. Sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Later on, after it caught Judas, caught a man by the name of Simon Magus, Acts chapter 8, who was in the gall of bitterness. Now, Simon 
was a magician. And they said by his sorceries, he deceived the people. The good thing, we read in the scripture that he heard the gospel and believed and was baptized. But then he reverted to his old way. He saw the disciples as they laid hands on uh, the new disciples and, and they received the Holy Ghost. And Simon was impressed by that and he said, hey, I'll, I'll give y'all some money if you'll show me how to do that. And Peter said, let your money perish. God can't be bought. And that's when the scripture says that Simon was in the gall of bitterness. Oh, the church is made up of all kinds. And one I really want to uh, labor on for a moment was named Simon Peter. He was like a catfish. All mouth. You can catch a big old catfish and the, the head and the mouth makes up their body for the most part. But Simon Peter always had his mouth open. Jesus told him, he said, hey, they're going to come get me to crucify me. Peter said, Lord, they all may to die you, but not me. The Lord said, Peter, before the crow, before you hear him three times, the, <laughs> the cock crows, you're going to deny me. And our Lord told him rightly because that's what Peter did. When they came and said, the little woman pointed to Peter and said, this man here was with Jesus. You remember what Peter said? No way. Not with that guy. And the third time he cursed to show that by his cursing he didn't align himself with that which was righteous and good. But the Lord told him, he said, they're coming after me. Peter took out his sword and he cut a man's ear off. And the Lord said, Peter, not sir, he took the man's ear and put it back on the guy. Simon Peter should not have done it in the beginning. He tried to tell the Lord how to run his business, didn't he? He said, no, you're not going to die. Can't do that. And then we'll go to a little, another little fish called a crawfish. A lot of Christians fit this category. Uh, when I was a young boy, I caught crawfish just daily. We were down at the creek and the pond and catching crawfish. But a crawfish, literally when he crawls, he crawls forward real slow. Real slow. But something struggling, man, he's back in a minute. He's gone, pew, like lightning. That's the way some Christians are. Going forward for the Lord, they're real slow. But the least little thing happens, pew, where they're at, they're gone. Amen. Jellyfish. They tell me they, I never was around jellyfish that much, but they tell me they just swell up. You ever seen people at church just, they couldn't get their way and they just swell up? I have. It's a fact. We used to sit out in the lake. My dad didn't like to bass fish as much as we did, so we'd have to be forced, my brother and I would, to tie up to a tree and we'd be sitting there in the lake fishing for crappie. And under the boat, you'd hear some go, oh, oh. it was a drum. They do that. They get under a boat and they make a, a, a loud noise. You know what I'm talking about, a drum. Uh, it like a huge perch. You got some people that's always making a lot of noise, always growling about something. Is that right? They're there. And then sometimes when you throw that net out, and I had this happen different times, 
especially when I was seining for fish bait, and I used to do a lot of catfishing. And we'd get a seine and get out in an old slough or pond that had fish in it. But I remember one day vividly, we drug that seine to the bank, and it had two water moccasins in it. And sometimes you're going to catch a snake. That's representative of Judas, wasn't it? Who will devour the other fish if you're not careful. So, <laughs> I'm going to let you categorize yourself, see which category you fit in. But the one that's most admirable is called a goldfish. Goldfish is just made to look at, isn't it? Any of y'all have a goldfish in your house ever? When I was a boy growing up, we didn't have running water in the beginning. We had an old well at the back of the house. And I'd go out and look down in the well, way down we'd drop a bucket down in and, and get, get us some water to carry back to the house. But somewhere, somebody down the way had dropped a couple of goldfish in our well. And from way up high, you could see those goldfish just swimming around all the time. But that's where we got our water. People said, well, did you have running water? Yeah, I ran out and got a bucket and ran back. <laughs> but some folks, you know, I mean, that's a fact of life. And my mama would do the laundry, which later on I inherited. I was the last kid at home. I had to do it. But we did have a ringer top washer by the time I got that old. But they had the old buckets, uh, tubs, and those number three tubs. And it took a lot of water to fill those things up. And you had to make a bunch of trips and draw a lot of water. But we'd watch those goldfish down in that well and just admire them. And that's the way we ought to be is like the goldfish. Just people like to see us in the water. But look at verse 47 again in the middle of your page. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. The good are kept in vessels and the bad were cast away. Verse 49 says, So shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just. When you go fishing, you catch a lot of fish that were not desirable. You have an old fish gar that was always present, and you didn't eat a fish gar. You cast him aside. And they had a fish that we caught several of, and boy, that could make you think you was catching a whale when they'd bite a hook called a grinnel. If you ever try to eat one of those things, like eating cotton, that's why most people just threw them aside and didn't eat them. But the angels are going to come, aren't they? That's what the scripture says. And they're going to separate the good from the bad. The just from the unjust. And the just are those that have been justified by the blood of the Lamb. Those that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, the master fisherman. The Lord shall be the master fisherman who's going to separate those, for he knows his own. Matthew 13, verse 30, the last article on your paper, the last verse of scripture. The Lord said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I'll say to the reapers, gather together first the tares. Bind them in bottles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Hey, I'm going to keep the <laughs> folk, if anything you want to be is, is a keeper. Used to, we'd catch a little small bass or a crappie that was a little bit small, and we'd say, well, he's not big enough to kill. 
And, and by the way, the game warden got something to say about that too if he catches you. You got to throw those little game fish back so they can grow. But the Lord himself is going to do the separation, the good from the bad. All right. I hope y'all learned something about fishing today. May the Lord add his blessings to these souls this morning.